The world has changed. America has changed. If something were to happen tomorrow... How self-sufficient would you be? Could you grow your own food? Could you sustain your own livestock? Could you survive? This is the We Grow Our Show with Nick and Don. Nick and Don talk about everything from politics to planting. They cover techniques, methods, and tips on how to not only survive, but thrive. Visit the website at wegrowhours.com. Lock and load. This is the We Grow Our Show. Get your grow on. Welcome back to the We Grow Our Show. Very special episode today. It's always special because we've got Don in the house. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, I'm excited. So I'm going to full disclosure here. Sun Ovens International sent me a Sun Oven um, six, eight months ago now mm-hmm. to do a review. I've been using it. I like it. <laughs> I like I it. I like a lot. it. So we decided to have him come on. Um, we're not currently dealers or resellers of this product, but he is giving our listeners a special deal right now. So if you go to his website, uh, sunoven.com slash we grow, you can actually get some some decent deals. We may pick this up as one of our only products on the mm-hmm. website. So what I did with it is I took it and it's summer, t- it's just about summertime when I got it. So I set it up outside. I haven't brought it in the house yet. I left it outside in the rain. I left it outside in the sun. I left it outside to rot, go bad, to crack, to get dirty, the whole nine yards. I love the dang thing. It's built solid. And other than wiping it clean, because it's dirty out near my house, I live in the desert with a lot of dirt that floats around. Plus, you're kind of a dirty dude. Absolutely. I'm a dirty guy. (laughs) (laughs) So now that the show has gone downhill yet again. <laughs> That's okay. There's only like four people listening. Yeah, it's okay. There you go. So you put it through the gauntlet then. Oh, heck yeah. And I mean, we use, my kids use it. We do hard-boiled eggs in it. Wow. And it's one of our favorite things to have do. Have you cooked any quail eggs in it yet? I have cooked quail eggs in it. They're not as easy to peel as hard-boiled eggs out of the chickens, but uh-huh. you can do fresh eggs with the chickens. And we used to keep them at least a week before we even hard-boil them because they're so hard to peel when they're fresh. Generally, two weeks old is perfect. Yeah, which means store-bought. Yeah. You know, when you think about that. When you're doing it yourself, you know, you think well, store- old eggs are two weeks. When you go to the store to buy them, they're already, they're already two weeks. Yeah. And don't they bleach the ones at the store? Yeah, Why they, are they white? They Well, they're the type of chicken, but they, they don't. I don't know that they bleach them. I mean, they clean them. That's why they're refrigerated. In fact, if you go over to eat, like Europe. Uh-huh. The eggs aren't on the ref- – they're not in the refrigeration well, even in, even section. Even in Mexico. Yeah, the, they're, they're on the shelf. On the shelf, yeah. So here they wash them and they, there's a membrane on the egg, on the outside of the egg. And I can't remember what it's called. It's but, Membrane? Yeah, it's like a mucus membrane. I know that sounds kind of gross. But if you wash them, that comes off. Oh, so they're no longer protected. Right. They're no longer protected so air can get in and everything else. If you don't, I mean, we leave our eggs on the counter. I would never refrigerate an egg, but we're yeah. getting so far off topic. Your eggs are good. I like eggs. Hey, it's, it's cool. You, you, we grow our own fish. We have our own chicken eggs. We do our own turkeys. I've cooked a 20-pound turkey in this thing for Thanksgiving. It did come out good. Really? It came out juicy as could be. Did you put it in a bag, like, like an oven yeah, bag? Yeah, we put you... it in an oven okay. bag and just set it in there. I didn't even use a rack or anything. And then we do a lot of one-pot meals. So we'll take a chicken, like a um, something you – you know, we used to buy them at Costco all the time, the pre-cooked ones, and they're kind of the roasting chickens. Uh-huh. And what we've done now is we, we buy a fresh one and put it in there or slaughter one and put it in there. And then <laughs> we take that and cook it. In the sun oven. <laughs> I wonder how many rabbits we can stuff in one of those things. I've done rabbit in it. Yeah. In fact, you did rabbit up, up well, north. Well, yeah, I, but that was in a, cath, a catharole. <laughs> <laughs> we had a catharole. It was wonderful. A casserole uh, really turned out great. I mean, there wasn't enough for everybody because they all wanted more second and third helpings. Yeah. Yeah. So. I remember that. I was there. Oh, that's right. You yeah. were there. It was my, one of my first butchering classes I did. I helped you out with. How'd I do? Terrible. Oh. I came in and saved the day, though, so it's okay. You're such a... No. <laughs> he did great. Can't even swear at you anymore because yeah. you're on the radio. <laughs> so many things I would say. 
<laughs> if you haven't been to one of Nick's butchering classes and you're interested in rabbits, hostilehair.com. Mm-hmm. You can go and do you have a, any coming up? At the moment, there's none on the books. I've been trying to get some together. I got to get a classroom that'll let me slaughter Thumper in there. So if you've got a classroom that you can slaughter Thumper in, there you go. Please contact us. We grow ours slash ask us. We grow ours at gmail.com or contact Nick directly at hostilehair.com. That's right. I'm looking for a place that doesn't mind a little blood spatter. Yeah, because if you get to go to one of these classes, if you've never done it before, it really kind of gets you over that fear. I've, I've been to a few of them now. I've seen some kids there learning. And that's something that, you know, last week we talked about homeschooling. Heck, take them to a slaughter class. Yeah. You know what's funny? The first girl, the first student that I ever had that actually butchered a rabbit under my uh, advisement was a 15-year-old cheerleader girl. And after that, all the guys were like, yeah, I'll get up there and do it. I'll just get it <laughs> grunting a little bit. But she's just up there. Okay, what do I do next? It was so adorable. She's just covered in blood. I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's really not gory. <laughs> I've been to the classes. It's never been very gory. Heads don't pop off very often. So <laughs> it's not that bad. And I know it's, oh. people are like, oh, my God, what are these people talking oh, about? Oh, yeah. If, it, if you're just tuning in, this is called the We Grow Our Show, yes. not the Slaughter Hour. That's right. <laughs> One of the things we – well, uh, Nick is the mass murderer of the cute and fluffy. And yeah. we believe in growing our own humane food. Mm-hmm. We treat it like it's supposed to be treated, which is respected and everything else, and treat them good. That's right. In fact, I'm I'm thinking about coming up with like a a motorcycle gang uh, patch that's Mott Calf, <laughs> Murderers of the Cute and Fluffy. Oh my goodness! Chapter President. <laughs> oh yeah. He's been watching a little bit of Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> step aside. We got the Murderers of the Cute and Fluffy. Well, you know, it is what it is. I mean, yeah. if you eat meat. You're supporting factory farms unless you're buying local, buying from your farmers or doing it yourself. Or hunting. Yeah, or hunting. And I don't support factory farms. I don't like yeah. to support them. Yeah, it's if if there were more people growing their own food or growing food on a small scale that they could sell locally, and if the flipping laws would let you do – I won't get into there. But there's regulations on butchering rabbits for other people. If those laws weren't there – be a lot easier to do what we want to do. Yeah, especially here in Arizona. Yeah. And Actually, in most states because it's USDA inspected. Yeah. So anyway, but if there were more people growing food locally, more people taking control of their food source, you wouldn't have the need for factory farms. And we're not saying you have to grow grow rabbits for, for no. meat. You don't have to grow anything for meat, frankly. Just support somebody who does if you're a meat eater. If you're not eating meat and you're a vegetarian or a vegan, then grow your own plants. That's right. If you're a fruititarian, uh, well, you're just – no, we're not going to even go there. So all two of you that might be out in the audience, fruititarians, (laughs) my apologies. I can't help you. That's just way too weird. I've never heard of that. Fruititarian? No. You just eat fruit. No, it's it's, – you don't pluck anything before it's time. So the fruit has to fall off the vine. Then you can eat it. So vegetables and all that stuff. Murdered. Has... Interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think we have a whole lot of this I, around. I, I really think that that was made up on a – it's on <laughs> Notting Hill, I think, is the movie that I was introduced gotcha. to, The Fruititarian. Wow. <laughs> so go to wegrowers.com slash ask us if you're a fruititarian and want to supply some feedback. Yeah, please. Because I've never talked to anybody like that. Me neither. It was a fictional movie, so it might not really exist, <laughs> which makes us even more pointless. Wow. <laughs> this but, is a We Grow Our Show, folks. It's all about <laughs> educating the masses on stuff that doesn't matter. Yeah, and today we're going to have Paul with International Sun Oven on. We're going to talk about the product. We're going to talk about how he came up with Sun it. Sun Ovens International, I believe. Okay. Sunoven.com. Don't screw it up, Don. Sunoven.com. There you go. Slash We Grow. Uh-huh. That's where your discount is. And I think it's like an eighty dollar discount too. Yeah, you can get some good package there. And I've done the uh, pasteurizing the water. Uh-huh. In fact, I'll see if I can find the video to post on the website at wegrowers.com. This will be episode fifty one. Because what I did is I took it out of our aquaponic system. Oh, so it's like yeah. kind of greenish. So, no, it's clean water. It's just you know I made a point of it and took a cup of it out of the aquaponic system and put it in the thing with the wappy. It's the called wappy? a wappy. Yeah, it's a. 
I'll have to ask Paul what it stands for, but it pasteurizes it. Put it in the sun oven. You watch for this wax to melt. It floats in the water. The wax melts to the bottom and it says it's pasteurized. And then I drink it. Interesting. But what really made me want to bring Paul on wasn't just the quality product that he's got. It's actually the fact that he's using it to like help internationally. Yes. Sun Ovens International or – Yep, you got I it. Mean, I got it right that time. <laughs> yeah, did. It's the international portion. And these things are made in the U.S., but he's really helping a lot of people overseas that you know don't have power. And it's a pretty phenomenal thing. Okay, when we finish up today, I've got a story. Remind me at the end of the show, I'm going to tell you about my mother-in-law. Uh-oh. She's awesome. All right, well, stay tuned for Paul, and we'll be back with Nick's mother-in-law after that. All right. do when your stored supplies run out are you prepared hostile hair provides equipment and education you need to control your own infinite food supply we have live food storage systems for rabbits quail and other urban livestock for any situation and strategy don't be limited by what's on the shelves get started with an infinite food source today get prepped stay fed with hostile hair call 480-331-3761 or visit hostilehair.com Lock and load. This is the We Grow Our Show. Welcome back to the We Grow Our Show. On the phone, we have Paul with Sun, o- Sun Ovens International. How are you doing today, Paul? Fantastic. Awesome. Now, you have a picture on your Facebook page, I love this, of a sun oven set up on top of snow. Now, I've always been in, under the impression that uh, sun ovens only work during warm times of year and i know that's a misconception but it's just kind of something that my brain figured out on its own and it's totally wrong am i right yeah we make the sun ovens in illinois about 40 miles west of chicago and um yesterday it was um the temperature outside was uh didn't get well before noon it didn't get above freezing so it started about nine below and it was sunny and we had a sun oven outside so um the outside temperature has no effect on the sun oven it's just the amount of direct sunlight. That's amazing. Yeah, it was a little chilly here, too, today, like uh, 69, 73 in that range. <laughs> I was thinking about getting a jacket, maybe. Uh, no, I don't uh, I don't envy you Illinois folks. I, I'm from southwest Wisconsin. There's a reason I I married a desert rat, and I'm, I'm staying here. <laughs> so that, that's pretty amazing. So you're reflecting light into uh, a box, basically, a special design. That uh, I mean, what kind of temperatures can you hit inside there? Well, the sun oven, uh, the maximum is 400 degrees, but very consistently 350 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that is amazing. And how big of an area do you have inside of the oven? Um, well, it can cook enough food for an American family of six people. Um, obviously, the biggest single thing you can cook into it, you can actually make up to a 21-pound turkey in a baking bag, but the... Um, wow inner box of the oven uh, or the opening of it is about 14 inches square and uh, and it's about 11 inches deep. So Paul, how did you, is this your design or how did you come up with the sun oven and how did it get designed in the first place? Well, actually, um, when you mentioned, uh, you know, Southwest Wisconsin, um, the uh, sun ovens were originally invented in the sun capital of the world, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I didn't invent the sun oven. I took over making them from the inventor about 17 years ago, but a gentleman by the name of Tom Burns, who owned a chain of restaurants in Milwaukee, invented the sun oven. He was very active in Rotary International and did a lot of rotary projects around the world. And we, he saw the need for a way to cook in deforested countries around the world. And uh, he uh, started when he retired from the restaurant business. He put everything he had into developing the sun ovens and really did an incredible job. We also make a very large commercial solar oven, which are used in third world countries. And Tom invented both of those and uh, did an incredible job with it. In 1997, um, Tom had been at it uh, at that point for um, about 11 years and he had put everything he had into trying to get sun ovens off the ground because he was 
really committed to using them in third world countries and uh he had gone um hugely into debt and uh he was uh, in his late seventies and the bank was trying to force him to move out of his home, sell his home to pay debts for what at that time was called the Burns Milwaukee son of and and one of my I was a uh, marketing consultant and one of my clients asked me to help Tom out um to see if there's any way I could help him market the ovens and, you know, get out of the mess that he was in financially. And um, I didn't know anything about solar cooking, never even heard of it, and started working with him and saw the need for it around the world and kind of got hooked with it. And uh, Tom, as he was approaching his 80th birthday, just kind of ran out of gas with it. So um, I put together some investors who were able to pay off his bank loans and worked a royalty arrangement with him and and um, moved them making of sun ovens from Wisconsin to Illinois, and um, we didn't buy Tom's company. We just bought the design, so we formed a new company and named it after the product, Sun Ovens International. That's perfect, because that's what you're, I mean, if you're going to Africa, I think you've earned the name International. <laughs> yeah, we have ovens actually about 130 countries around the world, and so um, they really uh, you know, they make a big difference. They're still... 2.5 billion people in the world who cook with wood or charcoal or animal dung as their primary um, cooking fuel. And um, when a woman cooks over a wood or charcoal fire, she inhales the same amount of smoke as smoking three packs of cigarettes a day. And each year in the continent of Africa alone, 1.6 um, million children under the age of five die of respiratory diseases, primarily from the indoor air pollution of cooking fires. So we're very passionate about our work internationally, and frankly, our model or our goal is that we have uh, a very simple business model that we try to help people in the U.S. save energy and prepare for emergencies, and then we use some of the cash flow that we generate from that to work in third world countries. That's awesome. I, I As you may know, I, Don and I were really heavy into livestock integration, and one of my dreams is to build a system that you could just roll up in a semi trailer and deploy it in the middle of the desert somewhere, and all you need is water and sunshine, and have this this thing just pump out food. And mm. uh, I think that that would be. I think we need to integrate solar ovens into that plan. <laughs> well, we've got a system sort of like that. I mean, we um, we have a whole system for making the ovens into the world countries. The only sun oven bought in the United States is made in the U.S. and all the parts in it except the thermometer are made in the U.S. But we also have licensed entrepreneurs to make sun ovens with a very simple system of jigs and fixtures and tooling that we've developed for the third world. And they're made in Haiti and in Ghana and the Dominican Republic and Uganda and Ethiopia and Mauritania. So um, we've tried to take a model where we're able to uh, start producing the ovens in the country they're going to be used to reduce the cost both of the ovens and the cost of shipping them. I, I have to tell a little story. Uh, I Up in Prescott, Arizona, I had a class on butchering rabbits. And while we were up there, the guy the, where we were having the class, he actually retails your ovens. And uh, he said, well, let's make this dual purpose and bring up some rabbit meat. And so we made up some casseroles and some uh, different things. He actually broiled rabbit and and heated up and cooked casserole in your oven, and it was awesome. It turned out so good. Yeah, it's amazing when you make any kind of meat in a sun oven. Um, it uh, There's no movement of air in the sun oven, so you're really just heating the air around the food, and meat comes out incredibly moist. Um, I mentioned you can make up to a 21-pound turkey, and any time I've ever made a turkey in the sun oven and said that anybody's eaten it, it said the light meat's more moist than any dark meat turkey they've ever eaten, and when hunters discover sun oven, game has a tendency to be awfully dry sometimes, and the little bit of moisture that a lot of game has stays in it. So it it is really a wonderful way to make meat. Well, I think that if I take one of these things on a hunting trip, there's not going to be a whole lot of venison making it home. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, one of the things that struck me about the sun oven is is all. I mean, you're helping a lot of people internationally um, survive, frankly. And that really comes down to the core of our audience, which are preppers and homesteaders, people that want to live with less energy and, and more off-grid than I think most people out there do currently. And the sun oven fits right into that plan. 
how have you seen the market here in the U.S. kind of change over the last maybe couple of years? Yeah, I mean, we, we saw a real shift in the market, frankly, starting in 2008. Um, prior to that, our market domestically were was primarily people who were looking at being green. And um, with a lot of the things that happened in 2008, uh, uh, with uh, the financial meltdown and uh, some of the things that occurred with the elections that year, um, it seemed like there was just a sudden surge of uh, interest in people being prepared. It's kind of ironic. I was actually working on a project in um, Kampala, Uganda, during the financial meltdown of 2008, in the fall of 2008, and I was watching on BBC the you know, the collapse of um, um, Lehman Brothers and AIG and all that was going on and General Motors and watching it from a third world country. And I was getting emails from my office saying sales were skyrocketing, going through the roof. And as people were suddenly looking that there might be uh, more reason to be prepared than what they had thought, um, we saw a pretty significant increase in the sales of sun ovens. And now, the majority of people who buy sun ovens in the U.S. Um, buy them uh, for emergency preparedness. But one of the most unique things about the sun ovens when it comes to emergency preparedness is that if you get a sun oven and you just start using it, um, you'll find that it will pay for itself in a relatively short period of time. I was teaching a class two years ago in your area in Phoenix, and a gentleman told me he had gotten a sun oven, kept careful track of how much money he saved by using it, and he said he paid for it in less than six months, but then he continued to keep track of what he saved by using it, and he used that then to um, fund the rest of his food storage and emergency preparedness. And he saved some money by in cooking fuel, and the average American family spends about 14% of their utility budget on cooking fuel, but in areas where there's you know, people's the main utility bill is air conditioning, if you do all your baking outside, Good point, Paul. And we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back in just a minute. And I want to talk about those roasts and some of those recipes. So we're going to take a quick break and be right back with Paul of Sun Sun Oven International. Things just got real. The drugstore is closed and the doctor is unavailable. What are you going to do? Stock your medicine cabinet and bug out bag with nature's alternative, essential oils. Visit mylavenderlife.com for all your essential oil needs. Lock and load. This is the We Grow Our Show. Welcome back to the We Grow Our Show. We have a guest on the line. Somebody that will turn that sunshine into something yummy. We've got Paul with Sun... Is it Sun Ovens International or Sun Oven International? It's Sun Ovens International. Okay, it's a a plural. Got to add the S. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know what? Before I forget, Paul, you let me know, too, that you actually put up um, a page for our audience to get a discount on these. And that is www.sunoven.com slash we grow. Now, I'm going to put that link on the website. It'll be episode 51. So go take a look at that. Look at the link in the bottom of the show notes, and you'll see that link over. You can save some significant amount of money on these sun ovens. Now, before the break, we were talking a little bit about all of the places that that Paul has his ovens and his humanitarian efforts around the world and uh, really – how how awesome these things are. I feel like a salesman here. I'm I'm not getting paid to tell you how awesome these are. I've used them. I like them and I want to have two or three of them. <laughs> I mean, I've I've cooked rabbit in it. Uh we cooked some cooked up some casserole and I think he even did a uh kind of a, a a broiled rabbit. I I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's where you you grill it inside of an oven. That's broiling, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, delicious. It was awesome. Anyway, let's let's go on. I, I, I had to get the the token fat guy <laughs> sayings out of the way there because that's uh that's my plight in life. What can I say? Yeah, Paul. What are some of your favorite recipes in the sun oven? Um, my uh, favorite recipe and the absolute simplest thing that I'm making the sun oven is corn on the cob. If you just take corn, you leave it in the husk, you just dip the uh, corn in a bucket of water or hold it underneath a water faucet and put the whole your corn inside the uh, a wet husk in the sun oven. You can do 12, 15 years at a time if you want um, 
when you peel back the husk and put some butter and salt on it, it literally melts in your mouth. So as a, a real simple thing to do, um, it is really, really delicious. And uh, so many people, I speak to a gentleman today in Utah who um, had taken the uh, we have a turkey rack available for the sun oven, and he said, "I've never used it for turkey, but I, you know, just load it up with corn, and now my family won't eat corn any other way." So that's a a very simple thing to do. Um, and then probably my um, second most favorite thing to do is to just make a chicken. I'll just take a three four pound chicken, throw it in a pot, throw some potatoes, carrots, onions in with it, set it out in the sun, and I can either, if I realign the sun oven, the power of sun every 30 minutes, I can cook a three-pound chicken in about an hour and a half, or I can just set a frozen chicken in the sun oven in the morning, go to work, and come back at supper time and have a cooked roast. So I can slow cook all day if I choose, and whether I cook it quickly or slowly, um, the the meat is just so moist, and the juice from the chicken cooks into the um, um, potatoes and the carrots um, and you really have a one pot to wash and a really delicious meal. Yeah, you know, that one pot meal is one of my favorite things to do. And in fact, we probably use the sun oven at least once a week at this point. And it's mostly what I do is I put it in the, the double pot because we have a family of five. And with my father in law is with us now, six people. And you were saying that you can feed six people out of this thing. That's no joke. We we do a lot of things like hams and chickens, and and we put the potatoes and carrots in there, and uh, you know it just it comes out amazing. And and I have cooked the turkey in there, but I do want to say one of my favorite things is I'm I'm a guy that likes fish, so we take those tilapia, and we used to put them in the house. And if you've ever had fish, you know that it smells up your house. That's what I like about the sun oven is we can throw it in there and we get none of the sm fish smell in the house at all. So we're cooking it outside in the sun. I can leave it, you know, as long as I want. And I never overcook it. So Plus the fish doesn't dry out. I mean, um, a lot of times when you bake fish, you leave it in just a few minutes too long. And as it, in the regular um, oven, it has a tendency to dry out quickly. In the sun oven, you can leave it in an extra hour and it's not going to dry out. So you always have really... Um, you know, moist, luscious fish when, when you go to eat it. Yeah. So one of the other things that I thought was cool with the sun oven was that you can not only cook food, but you can pasteurize water. So tell me a little bit about how that works and how that might help in an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. um, well, you can boil water in the sun oven, but at most altitudes, water boils at 212 degrees, and it takes as much energy to bring water from 200 to 212. The last 12 degrees take as much energy is bringing it from the ambient temperature up to 200. Pasteurizing water kills all the same germs that boiling does, but pasteurizing water is just bringing it to a temperature above 150 degrees for six minutes. And there's little devices that are available with the sun oven that are called WAPIs, or water pasteurization indicators. And they're just a little simple um, plastic tube that floats on the top of a pot or a pan or a canning jar, and it has a wax in it. And when that wax, it's a green-colored wax, and the green wax melts and goes to the bottom of the plastic tube, then you know the water's pasteurized. So the benefit of pasteurizing is only that it um, is more than twice as fast as boiling. So if you were in a situation where you were wanting to be prepared and use the sun oven for emergency preparedness and you're using it for cooking and possibly for solar dehydrating and trying to use it for water as well, you're able to uh, then be sure that the water... Um, is safe to drink and do it much faster. Some people keep a piece of cheesecloth with their sun oven so that they could pour the water through the cheesecloth. That will take any solid impurities out of it and then pasteurize it in the sun oven to make sure that the, the germs are killed. Well, that way you can leave all of the, the dead germs in there and get a little bit of nutrition with your water. <laughs> mm. Well, that was gross and totally threw me off. For those of you just tuning in, this is the We Grow Ours show. You can check us out online, wegrowours.com. But uh, you're listening to KFNX, Independent Talk Radio, 1100. Did I totally screw that up? No, you got it. I got it. All right, cool. I'm getting better at this. So we're talking to Paul of International Sun Ovens. I'm sorry, Sun Ovens International. <laughs> See, then I screwed your company up and you're – <laughs> I'm not a smart man, Paul. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Paul, what is the, the link to your website? It's just the sunoven.com. So www.sunoven.com. And 
if anybody is interested in trying to just figure out what you can, all the things you can do with the sun oven, there's a button that's on our homepage or on pretty much every page that says how to use. And if you just click that button, there's videos there on how to use a sun oven as a solar dryer, dehydrator. Um, those of your listeners who raise their own chickens would really like the sun oven to make hard boiled eggs. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. tried that in the sun oven, but if you take a egg and put it in, um, you don't even use water. You just put the eggs in the sun oven. You can actually rip the lids off cardboard egg cartons and do two dozen eggs at the same time. The nice thing is you can take a, an egg, you know, a fresh egg, hard boil it in the sun oven, and that membrane that makes it very difficult to peel disappears. So if you do it in the sun oven without water, then um, you can take an egg. Uh, I've done demonstrations of people's homes who've raised chickens and taken an egg within 20 minutes of dropping out of the chicken, hard boiled it, and you can peel it very easily without gouging your fingers um, and the egg. Yeah, you know, peeling eggs is one of the things I hate to do. It was funny because my father-in-law is staying with us, and he made some. He wanted to make egg salad for everybody, so he hard boiled about two dozen eggs. And I came in, I saw that pot boil, and I said, "Well, I hope you're peeling those things because I'm not." And I said, "Next week, when you want to do this again, you let me know." And I did them in the sun oven, and the peels pop right off. I, I'm, wow. It's really cool. In fact, I would never boil an egg after doing it there because we have two cardboard containers. We did that. We ripped the top off, throw the eggs in it, put it in the sun oven, and you let it sit. I, I've let it sit about two, three hours. I have no idea how long you're supposed to do it, but about two or three hours, and they're perfectly cooked. It's really cool. Huh. Mm-hmm. No, and, and, and that works out. Well, one thing people, I just like to caution, if you take a bunch of eggs and you put them in a pot, and you hard boil them in the sun oven, they'll hard boil fine, but you'll find you'll get a brown spot on the egg wherever the eggshells touch each other. So that's why we recommend putting them in the cardboard egg cartons um, to boil them without water in the sun oven, and then you don't get any spots on the egg. Now, I'm going to shift gears a little bit from eating and drinking. I'll suggest a product to you. You've already got a great way of of directing the sun's uh, energy. Uh, have you heard of superheating ammonia in order to cool something? Have you, I don't know if you've, you've uh, come across that in the third world situations uh, where you need to keep medicines cool and things like that. It, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not familiar with it at all, and so I really don't have any um, direct experience or expertise at all in that area. <laughs> I'll tell you what I was thinking. I saw your son oven and immediately thought this would be the perfect setup to put some black iron pipe inside of it and have an ammonia system to where you could superheat ammonia to compress it. And then when you compress ammonia, when you alleviate the pressure, it actually causes a cooling sensation, or not sensation, but it actually will cool a small container. And that's that's how uh, older refrigerators used to work. I know you're you're going to all these uh, third world places that don't have refrigeration, I, I don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe we should talk off the air. I'd love to design mm-hmm. something that would just fit inside of a little oven like that and make it work. No, it sounds like a, it could have a real advantage, that's for sure. So again, Paul, the website is sunoven.com? Yes, okay. www.sunoven.com. And you click the How to Use buttons and there's videos on everything that you'd want to know about using the sun oven. Okay, and if you go to sunoven.com slash we grow... You can actually get a discount on the sun oven, so go check that out. Again, I'll put the link on my site. And, Paul, unfortunately, we're out of time already. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you, and uh, I guess we can do it again sometime. Absolutely. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. What will you do when your stored supplies run out? Are you prepared? Hostel Hair provides equipment and education you need to control your own infinite food supply. We have live food storage systems for rabbits, quail, and other urban livestock for any situation and strategy. Don't be limited by what's on the shelves. Get started with an infinite food source today. Get prepped, stay fed with Hostel Hair. Call 480-331-3761 or visit HostelHair.com. Lock and load. This is the We Grow Our Show. Welcome back to the We Grow Our Show. So Don reminded me that I'm supposed to tell you a story when I announced to my family that uh, we were going to have a talk show. On, uh-huh. Is this on the, the mother-in-law radio. story? This is the mother-in-law okay. story. So everybody's kind of gathered around. I'm like, guess what, folks? 
I'm going to be on the radio. They're like, oh, really? Like a, on an FM station? Well, well, no, but it's an AM station. It's 1100 AM. It's an awesome station. And my mother-in-law goes, oh, so it's just going to be in the morning? And I was <laughs> like, what? What do you What do you mean? In the morning is, well, it's AM. And I, oh. <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> she thought it was like 11 o'clock AM. Yeah. And I'm looking around. I was like, well, no, it's from 1 to 2. Well, then isn't that FM? I was like, well, actually, that would be PM. <laughs> and we have just completely changed the the whole room erupts in laughter. And this woman is really smart. Yeah, she is I've extremely She's smart. very smart. But occasionally, there's just little things that don't always um, exhume the smartness, if you will. <laughs> For example, <laughs> like she'll never listen to the show, I assume. But occasionally, when I have her daughter on, she'll listen to it. But uh, we <laughs> they're driving down from Flagstaff to Phoenix, and she gets this look of concern on her face as she's looking at the water retention on the side of, of the road. You know, every you know, 30 feet or so, there's anti erosion bales right. of straw. And pretty soon she goes, Is that is that how they feed the deer? <laughs> Cynthia, if you're listening, I'm so sorry that I did this, but it was just so funny. It's just an awesome story. Yep. But uh, yeah, and if if you ever hear me do my wife's voices, I don't really want to. That's how she sounds. <laughs> it's the real deal. So, all right, if you're just tuning in, it's we we at the first segment of the radio show. Uh huh. Nick said he had a story. Then we did the sun oven, so you're just catching us up. That's right. right. (laughs) Not everybody was listening at that part. I figured I should throw it out there. Yeah, I guess that's true. So anyways, we did have an awesome interview with Paul from uh, Sun Ovens International. And if you guys have any sense whatsoever, go out there and get a Sun Oven. Yeah. They're going to pay for themselves within six months. Your your return on investments, six months. Uh, It saves you that much power. And then on top of that, the grid goes down. Or maybe you just stop paying your electricity bill. I don't know. Hey, you know, I didn't have a sun oven at the time, but we had moved in our house out where we are now in Desert uh-huh. Hills. And we're in the house for about six, seven months. And all of a sudden the electric gets turned off. Pew. Like, you know, and the guy is out there. I was like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, you haven't paid your bill. I turned the electric off. I said, oh, my God. I call my wife. You didn't pay the bill. You know, the electric. I paid the bill. I said, all right. We go back. We look. Sure enough, we paid every bill. So I call him up. And this is like on a Friday they did this. And it's it's freaking almost summertime out. I mean, it's uh-huh. not it's not cold out. Yeah. Turns out that we had apparently owed some kind of deposit to get it turned on that we never did, that we weren't aware of, that was under a separate deposit account. We had no idea that this was supposed to happen, that we were supposed to make this deposit. They turned the electric off and couldn't get it back on until I think it was Monday or Tuesday the following week. Ugh. So we went three days with no electric, not because we didn't pay anything or anything else, but we didn't know. And you can't cook. It's a great way. And I'm telling you, if you're a prepper out there, Start using the products that you get now. Oh, yeah. Because we had to dip into some of that because we had no electric. I couldn't cook. If I'd had the sun oven, not a problem. You know, we're out cooking on the grill, propane, Yeah. you know, that type of thing. So we got by with no problems at all other than being a little bit warm. And I happen to have a generator so we could even run the AC at night if we needed to. You know, it was one of those things. It's like, hey, if I had that, no problems. Well, hindsight, you know, now you have one. Now you're set. Yeah, and you're going to get me started on APS at that point. Um, Not my favorite power company if you're listening. Jerks. <laughs> so I've got a story too. Nick, I know you want me to tell this story. Is this one about off- officer friendly? Officer friendly. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Assuming the position of listening. <laughs> you can't see this, but I'm like ready so to go here. I had a, a big nail in my tire. In fact, we had finished recording and I went out and saw a big nail in my tire. Couldn't get to discount tire, so I had to go the next morning to the shop down near us where I got the tire, so they get me a new tire. So I woke up. I, t- I told my wife, hey, you know, meet me down there. They open at like 9 a.m. You know, follow me down. No problems. Drop the car off. Well, I don't know how, but I drove with a nail in my tire very slowly down to the place, dropped the car off, got it checked in before my wife managed to get there. So I walked across the circle. Okay. 
Went in, got a cup of coffee. Now, mind you, I happen to be like almost in my pajamas. I mean, my shirt's all ripped up. I've got my hat on. I haven't showered. I'm in shorts and, you know, flip flops and kind of casual. I'm sitting out there eating my. So you were dressed to impress. I was dressed to impress. I mean, I had stains. I had gone out and taken care of, fed the horse and milked the goat, you know, cleaned the chickens a bit. So you probably smelled like. Oh, I stunk. There's no, I didn't smell like, I smell, I was stinky. (laughs) <laughs> and dirty and you know i got chicken stuff on me and the whole thing so i got my my fritter in there and i'm drinking my coffee out front officer friendly pulls up he says sir you need to leave <laughs> i was like i'm i'm waiting for my wife well, sir you need to leave there's no loitering here and just starts at me and so i i, I went to point to my car and there happened to be a vet a corvette sitting right there <laughs> And I just pointed at him like, well, sir, I just dropped my vet off <laughs> and pointed at it. And at that point, my wife pulls up in her car, which is a decent car. And I, I was just – I was so annoyed that he <laughs> – I had never been judged like that before in my life. Yeah. He I, thought I, I was I just... a homeless guy and was asking me to leave. Well, he smelled like horse crap. Oh, and chicken and everything else. But I was just, you know, I, I, I almost lost it, but I figured it wasn't worth ending up in any trouble for, for saying what I really felt like saying. So. No, see, that's we would have publicized that local shock jock gets thrown in jail for <laughs> shock being, jock. being confused with a homeless man. And I got to say, I respect police officers the utmost. Um, I don't always agree with the policies, <laughs> but I respect the people. And this was just not cool. I would have loved to have seen his expression when you're like, uh, well, I just dropped my vet off over here. And then yeah. a Denali rolls up. <laughs> it was kind of fun. Oh, my God. He's just like scratching his head. Uh, oh. Okay. Seems I misread this situation. <laughs> Move along, citizen. How do you loiter drinking a cup of coffee that you just bought from oh, the yeah. store? That's what I don't understand. It's like you're carrying product from the store. Yeah. You've been invited on. They've taken your money. Yeah, the you gal inside, other than th- stink- thinking that I stunk, it was very nice to me. Oh, well, we all know that I've got a story about stinking at a gas station. <laughs> How much time do we got? Oh, we're getting close, but all right, why not? I mean, we haven't talked about anything on topic of growing our own food, so let's hear the story, Nick. Well, this is more along the lines of uh, sustainability, though. For about six hours, I was playing with a gasifier that was running on rabbit poop. And I'm standing right. We always go back to the poop. Of course, of course. So I'm standing right in the cloud that is the the smoke from the poop burning, and I'm trying to get this thing to light an engine. It's working pretty good. It smells kind of bad. I didn't think anything of it, but my eyes are bloodshot and dried out from being right in it. And I was driving home. I stopped off at a store to get like a Snickers bar and a Gatorade or something. And I walk in. And as soon as I walk through the door, the cash re- the cashier looks at me and just scowls. I'm like, "What's her problem? Whatever." And uh, walk back, get my get my Gatorade, my Snickers bar, and walk up to the front. And she's just real quiet and leans forward. She goes, "Are you high? Am, am I what? Am I high? Are you high? Are you high?" <laughs> uh, well, no. She's like, "You smell like weed, I'm like lady." <laughs> You've been buying some crap weed because <laughs> this is not weed. And she's just, she's just, it's funny how judgmental people get when you smell like burnt poop. Yeah. Well, and I got to admit, I smelled you. <laughs> you were, you know, we had a gasifier at my house running for a while and I'm out there. It stinks. Yeah. And I can see the resemblance. Not that I know what weed smells like or anything, but I can see the resemblance <laughs> of that. Is smell that why you kept sniffing me? Poop. Is that what happened? <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Can we shut it down yet? Holy yeah, crap. Yeah, we're almost there. So <laughs> it was it, that was a you're lot of fun li- working the, on that. You're listening to this de- delightful conversation on the We Grow Ours show. You can find us at WeGrowOurs.com. And We Grow Ours means we grow food and livestock, not other things. We grow other things, too. Oh, you're talking about weed? Yeah. I've never you grown weed. just had a weed. conversation about weed. I want to explain. No, I had that's a conversation about poop and the misconception of poop smelling like weed. <laughs> All right. Well, now that we've uh, 
entertained everybody. Sorry, potheads that wanted to learn how to grow your own pot. Just plant the seeds and go for it. Yeah, but not in Arizona. Go to Colorado. Of course. Go to Colorado. Or Washington. Or Washington. Yes. And use aquaponics. Yes. <laughs> you knew that was coming. Of I course. had to throw it in of there. Of course. You're, you're just a shilling away over there. That's right. So for more on... Moron. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get off the air now. I think so. www.wegrowours.com slash ask us for all your feedback. Visit the website, wegrowours.com. You can click on the ta- <laughs> tag cloud on the right-hand side and see all the topics, including rabbits and aquaponics and quails and bees and everything else. And poop. And poop. I don't think I have the word poop in the tag cloud. Well, you better fix that, Don. Do you know it what would just bring of... up every episode anyway? It would. It would, because we always <laughs> talk about poop. So if you guys Listen, are... Listen, we like to eat, and something <laughs> happens after you eat. Yeah, so if you're interested <laughs> in growing your own food, go check out the website. Give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. Let us know what kind of guests you want on the show and what subjects you want. That's the best way we can give you guys what you want. So... Thank you for joining. Catch you next time.